Hey everyone and welcome back. So today's tutorial that I have for you is this beautiful deep green gem and we're going to have these veins running through it that are kind of luminous. So let's get started. I'm very excited about this. I thought, of, thought it up basically last night and I am. I'm very excited about it. So, in order to create this, we're going to start with our veins. And the veins that I want to do in this, I'm going to use green gold and ivory. You could also use white. I wanted ivory because I wanted a slightly more muted feel. Um, just because I didn't know quite how bright the white was going to end up inside of it. And so, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And then for the greens that I have, I have lightest to darkest, leaf green, permanent green, and pine green. I want it to be a very earthy green um, instead of a more blue green, which is what I normally do with like the dark thalos and the dark deep cobalt greens and like hooker's green those are a little bit more blue greens so i want to go with more of a green like earthy green i also have my blackout in case i want to like really make those edges dark so let's go for it first thing i want to do is i want to draw out um, a whole bunch of the little veins that i want to do and I was thinking about almost like having, I don't know, like a, like a spot here. And then just drawing them out from my spot into the rest of the gem. Oop. I'm pushing a little bit hard here, as you can obviously tell from my breaking polychromo point because I do not want this to go away when we're blending over it and all that kind of stuff so and always your patterns of cracks can go all kinds of ways Though the way cracks can be very, very organic and just kind of go anywhere. <laughs> I like the way that looks. It looks alright. Now what I want to do is I want to go over it and kind of frame it almost with the ivory. So I'm going to go right along the side of it and see how much of it's going to blend, how much of it's just going to sort of be encased in it. And again, I'm using decent amount of pressure. Not a, like a ton, because I'm not obviously snapping this, but it's decent. I do want this to be on there. I don't want it to... Um, blend out into the other polys like super easily which is what I would normally want when I'm doing these because I would want kind of a softer edge but I don't want that softer edge to just blend away into the other colors especially something as vibrant as green so just going along the edge here it is kind of messy. I don't know if you can tell that or not, but it is. I'm not being super precise, even though I could be. We want the effect. There we go. So, now we'll get to the fun part. Um,. I'm going to start with my lightest, which is the leaf green. Yes, the leaf green. And we're going to, I want my uh, light to be 
my light hitting it, my highlight up here. So that means that this is going to be my lightest part down here. So that's kind of where we're going to start. And using very, very light pressure, I'm going to kind of just go over all of it. And there you can kind of see already how it's kind of haloed by the ivory. That's totally what I wanted. And I just want that like right down in the bottom. And then I'm going to move to my permanent green. Remember your edges are always very, very, very important. I'm going to get this down at the bottom as well as go all the way around with it. And although it seems like it's really light right now, we're going to go pretty dark with this gem. So, kind of excited about that. It's like, what if a mineral, like, I don't know what a good mineral to name would be, like, infiltrated a uh, deep green emerald or something. Although emerald is kind of more of a blue green than an earthy green. So maybe like, hmm. I don't know, what's, it, what's a deep green gem? There's a couple of them and I can't just think of the names off the top of my head. But I know a couple of them. I'm sure I do. Alright, moving to the pine green which I have up here as my darkest again gotta make sure I get my edges nice and dark and that's where you begin to see really that depth as you begin bringing in the pine green it begins bringing into the bringing in the illusion of 3d and volume because lights and darks are what it's all about when you're doing anything that is trying to pop out and be 3D. Or at least give that illusion. Because that's what, I mean, the entire world is built on. is lights and darks. Light reflecting off of things, casting shadows, you know. That whole spiel. So, the general feeling that I'm getting is that I kind of want to smooth this out as well as work over my veins again before I go too far. So, I'm going to grab my Odorless Mineral Spirits and a paper stump. Now, some people actually use a paintbrush with their Odorless Mineral Spirits. And there's nothing wrong with that. I prefer a paper stump because I feel like it's a little bit easier to control how much I'm using. And I do not want to use a ton of it. I don't want to um, saturate the paper. I want just enough to blend out the colors. And that's it. I don't want to go any further with that. 
I also want it to dry really quickly, so a little bit less is good. So it'll dry faster. Okay, so I'm gonna go back in with my green gold. Just kind of reinforce a couple of these. Especially up here where it's getting a little bit dark. And same with the ivory. Just want to come in here. And just remind it that it's there. As you can see, it's not changing a whole bunch, but it is a little bit, and that's all I really want, is to make sure that it doesn't just completely fade away. Because we do want it to look like it's at the bottom of the gem and not like sitting right on top. We want it to look like it's encased in the glass of the gem or whatever. So, all right, going back to the pine green, I want to continue building up the shadow. And I have uh, had some people tell me they think that I push really hard. I usually don't. I usually hold the pencil really hard, <laughs> which ends up with my hands hurting. But that's why you see me holding so tight. It's not because I'm pushing really hard. It's just because I'm holding the pencil really tightly. It's a bad habit, but one I haven't quite figured out how to break. Because I get more intense and into my coloring versus into how I'm holding the pencil. I'm not reminding myself constantly. Alright, I'm going to go back down to the permanent green. And go over both the light section as well as the dark section. Just kind of combining them. And then using the leaf green. And just wanting to blend it all out there and then right there I think just grab the ivory and make sure it stays nice and light in this area and ivory being as light as it is is also great for blending in general so here we go I really do. Um, I do want to make it darker though. So, I feel like we can get more volume built into it. So I'm going to go around with my black up here very gently at the edges. I 
You just want to push it that one little bit more. As you can see, I use my black quite often. Um, I think I find I just love contrast, high contrast, so much. I want it kind of almost be like this green world inside this gem. And then I'm just going to take the pine green and go back over that. This is one of the reasons I just love polychromos is because you can just layer and layer and layer and layer and you just don't have an issue. And it's wonderful. Oh, I really like that. Okay. So. I love just how glowy it looks. And glowy is totally a word. I use it actually really often. Yeah. See, even just then, it like has this inward glow without even putting the highlight on it. And that's fantastic. I always want that look. Even before I put the highlight on, it makes it just so much better. All right, gonna grab my gel pen, the Uniball Signal, and then remember, go right across from your highlight, or from your reflected light inside the gem, and then right in the middle, and then go just to the side of where the middle would be, and if my gel pen likes me today, And follow the curve. Or not. Of my gem. She is having issues today. Serious ones apparently. I will have to come back and fix this. Goodness gracious. Usually it doesn't take this much to try and get a good highlight, but I guess I'll need a new one soon. I don't actually go through them that often, but Good grief. It's really fighting me today. So, get out my jelly roll and give myself some finer highlights around here, maybe a couple little dots. And I usually go in and clean the edges of my highlights so that they are nice and sharp. But I'm going to have to fix that highlight anyway. 
go over it with, I guess, my jelly roll. But there we have it. I'm going to fix my highlight. And I hope you go make one because this is just gorgeous and I love it. And now I need to do the rest of it. i got to, like, decorate around it and stuff and doodle. So I hope you guys go do one and I hope you post it and tag me and show me what you did because I'm always excited about it. And I'll talk to you guys next time. See you later. Bye.